balancing on one foot. Whew, this sure is tricky. Maybe I'll try again. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, sugar cookies. I'm gonna have to keep practicing my balancing because whew, that is tough work. Do you know how to balance on one foot? Maybe we could try it together. Ready, set, Go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whew. Good job, everyone. I think I need to take a break. <sighs> That's better. Hmm? Hey, Allie, did you hear? Did you hear? Whoa, hey, Mr. Donkey. Did I hear what? Taylor Swift just released a new album and OMG, it's so good. Wow, Mr. Donkey, I didn't know you were a Swifty. You seem pretty excited about this new album. And you know what? That's making me feel pretty excited too. Huh, funny how joy seems to be contagious. Speaking of joy, Mr. Donkey, before we listen to this new album together, do you want to read our Bible story for this week? It's full of babies and animals and big announcements and lots and lots of joy. Oh, I'd love to, Allie. Yay! Our story this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that everyone should be registered in a census. So everyone went to their hometowns to be registered. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he and Mary traveled from their home in Nazareth to Joseph's family hometown of Bethlehem to be counted for the census. At this time, Joseph and Mary were engaged. Aww. And Mary was very pregnant. Ooh. One night, while they were in Bethlehem, Mary started having contractions, and she went into labor. But, oh no, there was no place for them to stay. So Mary and Joseph found shelter with the animals, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger. That's a place where animals eat hay. Cool! Meanwhile, there were some shepherds camping in the neighborhood, and they were keeping watch over their flock in the night. And suddenly, God's angel stood before them, and God's glory blazed around them. The shepherds were terrified. Ah! Then the angel said, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. A baby has just been born in the city of David. And this baby is a savior, the Messiah, who will save the world. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. To be continued. Wowee! Mr. Donkey, could you imagine if you were one of those shepherds just doing your everyday normal routine, and then all of a sudden, wow! All these angels showed up and they had some really good, crazy, amazing news. 
Oh, that would be so crazy. Crazy indeed. And really joyful, huh? You know, sometimes it seems like this joy, this warm and fuzzy and energetic happiness only comes in the big moments like Christmas or birthdays or in huge angelic announcements proclaiming that the world has changed forever. But I wonder, do you think joy can happen in our regular and ordinary moments too? Hmm. So here's an all play for everyone. What is something in a normal, ordinary day that makes you feel so very warm and fuzzy and happy. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let For sharing everyone. I know for me that's something that brings me joy in my regular day is waking up <sighs> and brewing a nice fresh cup of coffee. It smells good, it tastes good, and it warms up my whole body. But sometimes it's hard to find something joyful about our ordinary lives. Especially right now with all this coronavirus. It seems like every day is just the same old boring day over and over and over again. You wake up, you eat breakfast, you do school, you get bored of school, you eat lunch, you do more school, you get even more bored of school, then you eat a snack, and then you play outside, and then you eat dinner, and then you watch TV, and then you go to bed. Sometimes I feel like all I ever do in a day is eat, and work. Can I get an amen? But what if we could practice joy like we practice the piano or we practice soccer or math? What if that warm, fuzzy, energetic happiness could actually be part of our boring, normal, everyday routines? Like what if every day after you eat breakfast, you do a silly dance? Or what if every day after you finish math, you go outside and play your favorite game? Joy isn't this rare, luxurious thing that we say for only special occasions. Joy is something that we can practice and embody every single day. So try this with me. Spread your arms out wide, so wide that you could give the sky a hug and get ready to raise your voice as loud as you can, so loud that all of Minnesota could hear you. And we'll say, thank you, God, for bringing joy to the world. Ready? Thank you, God! Whew. Good job, everyone. Now, if you'll excuse me, me and Mr. Donkey have some Taylor Swiftin to do. Woohoo! So I hope that you have fun practicing joy this week and we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm like the water when you sip rolled in that night. Rough on the surface, but you cut through like a knife. If it was an open shut case I never would have known from that look on your face Lost in your current like a priceless wine The more that you say that